Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted on this episode to be talking with someone who's created in the world of comics for quite some time, and that is comics creator, editor, Jim Chadwick. Jim, may I call you Jim? Is that okay? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Jim, for jumping in and talking with me for a few minutes. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Your Your work goes all the way back. I know that you spent some time freelancing, but then I also know that you were an editor at Malibu for a while. Am I right about that? Uh, I was not an editor. Not an I, editor. You were I was at an, Malibu. I was, an, I was an art director. So, I mean, and that's part of my split career story. Like first the half of it was spent doing one thing and the back half of it was spent doing something else. So uh, gotcha, gotcha. The, the editorial part the being an editor part is um actually a, was sort of like a mid-career change that uh, i was lucky enough to have and that's sort of what's seen me through to the present yeah a long-standing career with dc comics if i'm correct on that uh a two-part career with dc comics actually mm -hmm. i i started dc in the early 90s and mm -hmm. my official title was director of design services so i was really more involved on the design part covers marketing uh i was very much involved in any of the printing of any of their upscale books like hardcover graphic novels and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and then you know was gone for dc doing various things for about 12 years and then in 2005 i got uh hired at the uh back at dc but actually at the wildstorm offices in la jolla uh, which was the studio started by jim lee back in the 90s mm -hmm. that became part of dc in the late 90s so and, and it was a weird circuitous way i ended up back at dc you know after after having left and uh and and that's where i was right up until recently so yeah yeah just just recently well, retired. yeah not not wildstorm i should clarify that but wildstorm they shut those offices back in 2011 and then moved us up here to burbank where we just sort of became part of dc so oh, gotcha gotcha yeah. uh what was it about the world of comics that initially connected you and uh made you sort of say this this is the space for me to be in uh i mean that like with a lot of people that just goes back to childhood you know i mean mm -hmm. I, I started out reading like newspaper comic strips that was sort of like my big love as a kid and then got into comic books very early on and 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 wanted to draw comics for a long time you know i love i love comic books and uh and and i just you know had a certain aptitude for drawing and you know i was kind of that kid in the class who oh he's the artist right mm -hmm. and, and you know making my own comics and writing my own stories and everything so i had and it was kind of an early dream of mine was to become first a uh, like a newspaper cartoonist and then a comic book artist and and it just it just never worked out for a variety of reasons and I my career sort of ended up drifting into uh, drifting into because it wasn't really a, a deliberate uh, course change for me but I you know I got into graphic design and so a lot of my early career my my pre-comics career was all um you know doing graphic design and, and some spot illustrations for various magazines that have long since gone out of business and uh doing editorial cartoons and that sort of thing and then um this is back in the late 80s uh i was doing some work for um malibu comics and this was before malibu was taken over by marvel years before there and i actually did draw a six issue mini series uh, for Malibu uh, that was called the Liberator and uh, that was a real experience for me because I realized at that point it's like I am never going to be cut out to draw superhero comics because it was just you know it was very grueling and and when you're a kid drawing right you draw all the fun stuff you draw the stuff you want to draw and then when you are trying to do it professionally you have to draw a lot of things that are real it could be challenging. So a lot of this trip was it kind of jumped back and forth in time between World War II and the present. So, you know, I had to draw all this military equipment. I had to research it all, draw, draw guns, tanks, all this stuff. And it was it was it was difficult. And I thought, OK, this is not the career for me. Maybe I'm more of a cartoonist than I am a comic artist. But uh, and then, you know, through a series of circumstances, uh, 
you know, mutual friends, that sort of thing. I, there was an opening at DC and, uh, I had a friend of mine who was able to connect me to, uh, the late Dick Giordano, who was editor in chief at that point. And, uh, you know, I met with Dick and uh, we hit it off and eventually I got hired there at DC. And so all of a sudden, you know, now I was working in comics, right. Which was uh -huh. not like, it wasn't like a solid through path, right. That I started as a kid. And this is what I'm going to do for sure. And I just sort of well, I'm a designer and I love comics, so this seems like a perfect place for me to be. And, yeah. uh, you know, so that's kind of how I got into it because I love, you know, I love the art. I love storytelling. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, it just always seemed natural to me. Now, there was an interruption in my career mm. um, when um, after, and this is another long story I'll cut short, but, you know, I had gone to work for Malibu Comics and then, they were bought by Marvel and then and then Marvel shut them down. And then I spent about 10 years doing other stuff. I worked for a toy company for some years and I worked for a uh, a video game startup company and I was doing some okay. freelance. And I also uh, wrote and drew and published one issue of my own comic in like 1997 uh, called Renan, which was based on a character I had created when I was a kid. And that was also an experience. It's like, well, that's really tough to do. <laughs> and then, and then eventually, like I said, I ended up, I ended up in San Diego working for the startup video company, video game company. And, uh, that, that kind of went bust. And then there was an opening at, at Wildstorm and, uh, Hank Canals was a guy who was running the studio at that time. And he and I had been, um, we had been friends and work partners at Malibu and Hank said, hey, you've got, I've got a couple of editorial openings here if you'd like to interview for them. And I said, well, I've never, never done comic book editing before, but I certainly am passionate about the medium. And, and I've certainly studied writing and, and, and storytelling was just something that came natural to me. And it just seemed like with a lot of my other experience, it all sort of tied together. And, and what's interesting to me is like, you know, when people ask me like what I do, right? Like as an editor, um, when I describe it to people uh, who are not in the business, they say, well, that sounds more like a producer job than an editor, right? Because you think of an editor as being somebody who's reading manuscripts all day and giving notes on manuscripts. But really, as an editor, you're running the whole show, you know, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. you're having the project and you're 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 deciding in most cases who the talent's going to be on there and you're hiring them and you're setting their rates and you're building the schedule and you're maintaining the budget and then you're reading the stories and giving notes and then you're checking the art. So, you know, it really is a, it's probably the most multifaceted job I've ever had, but that kind of came naturally to me and I really, really liked, liked doing it, you know, and, and, and uh, I've, there's been so many permutations of that though, because you know, when I started at Wildstorm, I was I was editing their manga line, and mm -hmm. uh, which was a completely new experience. And then I kind of transitioned into some of the Wildstorm titles, and then we started doing we started getting into the world of digital. So I was involved in some of doing our original digital comics that we were first doing, and then eventually when we moved to Burbank in the office, and then we sort of merged when the rest of DC came out here, then I just started doing a variety of stuff, you know, which was, um, so, I mean, I, I feel like I've had my hands in almost every aspect of the mm -hmm. business at one point or another, which has been great. Yeah. Yeah. As somebody that's worked across media that way between toys and video games and graphic design, uh, I'm curious about what it is about comics that you see as, as sort of a unique part of what storytelling can be. Yeah, I think, you know, the funny thing is when, you know, when I was growing up and I first had ambitions about doing comics and one of the reasons why I put that aside, it's like, oh, I can't be this great, I'll never be this great craftsman like, a you know, a Neil Adams or somebody of that. So it's like, so I might as well not bother doing it. And, and then what I discovered over the years is like, there's an immediacy to the medium, right? And mm -hmm. And the medium can't simply be defined by the big, predominantly superhero publishers, right? It's like anybody can make a comic. Uh -huh. and, and and that's a realization that's really hit me over the years. It's like, it doesn't matter whether you're working digitally, where you, you know, if you have a, a pencil and a, and a sheet of paper, 
you can make your own comics. And when I was a kid, that's what I did. And nobody ever saw these comics. They were just for my amusement. I enjoyed doing them, enjoyed making them. And you can make them very complicated, but on a very primary level, I think it's one of the most immediate ways of telling a story, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you want to make a film, you need some money for that. You need some collaborators. Uh, if you want to write a novel, it's, uh, you know, there's a whole process involved in there, particularly if you want to get it published. And, and, and but comics, it's just, it's you in the paper, or you in the screen, and, and it can be any story you want it to be. And, uh, and, and, and in a way that I don't think any other form of expression is like and and the other way i always look at it too is i i always regard it as it's a medium of of sort of frozen moments in time right because people always make the parallel to film but in film you've got a moving camera and uh -huh. there you you can do something continuously in comics it's like you've just got to get all these little beats right like you're you're sort of encapsulating this and and what's the best way to do that right and then you start thinking about camera angles and the layout of your page and the size of your panels and all that so uh, it, it to me it's just the possibilities are endless you know and i i encourage like people to you know just go and make their comics even if they have no intention of making a career out of it and we and we live in a great time where it's like you know, if you would do it once upon a time, if you want to make your own comic, well, that was money too, because you would have to get it printed and everything else. Well, now, you know, you can just stick it up online somewhere, you know, and if people see it and they like it, great. If not, you're still just expressing yourself and getting getting your work out there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, as an editor, what was the, what's been the approach, the, the sort of, um, mindset that you've kept as you've worked with talent and had of worked in that way and i say editor and uh certainly the description of it again there as you said is is very much a producer <laughs> with uh multiple multiple tasks and uh parts of the story that you have to take care of right right and so so how would i approach that is, is that mm -hmm. as far as working with talent and uh um... you know Every every project is different in a way, um, uh, you know, so in some cases, like a lot of the stuff I work on in D.C., not a lot, but it, at various parts of my career, it'd be like, OK, we're going to do a comic book based on this. Right. Because mm -hmm. I used to work on a lot of licensed um, properties and that sort of thing. And then in that case, the cho the creative choices weren't always mine. Right. We would have to collaborate with the the licensor and who they liked and who they thought was appropriate. And so that would be one thing, right? Because that was very much, we all go into it with the same sort of task at hand and, and limitations. And then, you know, you have the other spectrum, right? Where somebody's coming in with their vision, their passion project they want to do. And then, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, you're also working on, um, you know, these these regular schedules where books have to be produced. And, and I think, you know, as a very, on a very fundamental level, what an editor is tasked with doing by their, by their employer is to turn out quality work on time and on the budget. Right. And yeah. it's that, it's that three triangle where in all businesses, you know, good, fast and cheap, right. You, you can pick two, you can't have three in comics. You're expected to have all three. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it doesn't always work that way, but um, so you know, and 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 there's as many personalities as there are people in comics, right? So yeah. for me, I always I always kind of looked at you know who who am I dealing with, right? And 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 w what's going to help them to produce their best work, right? Uh -huh. And and if they're not somebody who can grind it out on a monthly basis, well, how do we structure a project around them so that you know they have sufficient time to do it, which we don't always isn't always the case uh -huh. and, and for me as an editor one of my most satisfying things is when i have a writer and an artist team that just clicks with each other you know yeah, yeah. because i i you know a lot of times i just hey you two just go talk amongst yourselves i mean bring me in as necessary but if you're really feeling the the energy and the love on this project and you feel like you're really clicking on all cylinders together 
I'm not going to get in the way of that, right? I, I want you to, I mean, obviously at a certain point, the work comes in and I'm going to have my critiques and my comments and changes and things of that sort. But but you want to have like a good solid team dynamic, you know, where everybody's sort of on the on the same page. And, and not that you never have disagreements, you do, but primarily you're all sort of moving towards the same vision of what that project is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and and there were occasions where I was, you know, actually told like, "This is who's working on this project." Okay, you know, uh-huh. fine. I will accommodate, and I will, you know, uh, establish a relationship with that person, and and we'll we'll go to it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Any um, as you look back through the titles, the experiences, the teams any particularly fruitful collaborations or sort of mile markers that you would look at and uh, that you look back with a special fondness? Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, there's several, I I think the project I'll always probably be the most associated with was injustice, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, which was based on the video game. And that was just one of the experiences like catching lightning in the bottle, you know, because we we had done comics based on video games, based on DC video games, and we didn't expect this to be anything special. And uh, I, you know, I, I had worked with Tom Taylor on a writer, Tom Taylor, on a, on a previous project, and we got along well. And I said, oh, you know, and Tom had even worked on some other licensed things for us, I think. And I said, you know, Tom could do a good job with these team books. And um, and we brought him on and and we were really lucky in that experience in that the the game people who had come up with the game, even though they were DC properties, they were open to like almost everything that Tom wanted to do. And they really hit it off great. And that just took off like a freight train. I mean, we were just stunned by it. It was one of the first original digital comics DC did. And it just it nothing we did digitally ever sold like that and then the collections did phenomenally well and Mm -hmm. and it was a weekly series so that was hard because you're you're juggling artists all the time because there's very few people who can do you know a weekly a weekly 10 page comic is 40 pages a month and 40 pages is not something the average comic artist can do so we were constantly juggling artists and we tom and i was talk whose style would be good for this particular story and and so that thing just took off and it ran yeah. for several years as a, and and then Tom has gone on to many many big projects with DC and other publishers and I've been really proud of what we accomplished on that one. So that that was most notable. Also um the only Eisner I was ever involved with is uh, I edited Jill Thompson on her uh, Wonder Woman the True Amazon graphic novel which was a real uh-huh. passion project for her. And, you know, that took several years to do and, 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 you know, there were challenges, but, you know, we finally got it done and then we were nominated and won the Eisner that year, which was, you know, it was very satisfying because it was a long time working together on this. And then there was a lot of fun stuff, like when I did the Batman, um, I edited the Batman Ninja Turtles crossover. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that was another case of just being like really, really lucky and maybe having the right instincts because I just, it was like James Tynan and Freddie Williams, and they knew a hell of a lot more about the turtles than I did. <laughs> they loved this stuff, you know? And, yeah. and it's a funny story about that too, is the way I got Freddie on that project was Freddie and I had worked on something together, some short digital thing or something. And and Freddie approached me at one point. He goes, hey, I know you do a lot of crossovers with DC characters and other characters. If you're ever going to do the Turtles, here's my Turtles art. And unbeknownst to him, we were already discussing that. Oh, and I just awesome. looked at his samples and I said, this is it. I'm not going to look any further. This is the guy. Yeah. And then again, he and James connected together and they were a phenomenal team. And that first series sold incredibly well for us. And we did two more sequels. So that that was fun, too. And then I guess the other one was like Batman 66, you know, <laughs> we finally had the rights to do that. And that was fun, but it was challenging because we were, we were doing it as a digital comic first. And, and so we were doing it with like a certain limited motion aspect to it. <laughs> so trying to knock that out every week and then also educating the artist on how to work in layers so that we would be able to move elements that it was, 
it should have been a more fun project for me than what it was, but it was just the challenges of the format um, really made it, you know, made it a, a lot of work and, you know, but still it was a fun series in the end and glad I got to do it. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few things. Um, well, I mean, the thing I just did recently with uh, Paul Dano and Stefan Subic, which, oh, yeah. uh, which was the uh, Riddler series, um, mm -hmm. you know, based on Dano's portrayal of the character and Matt Reeves, the Batman movie. That was, that, that was a great project too. And one of my last at DC. Yeah, yeah, that's a a great project uh, linking together the world of film and um, kind of exploring Paul Dano's take on that character. Uh, so yeah. lots of intriguing work. You, you've also been, am I wrong in saying that you were one of the minds behind um, sort of exploring middle grades and YA books in the DC universe as well and sort of bridging well, those worlds? Yeah, that was actually my last responsibility for dc um mm -hmm. and i spent like four years doing that so we did a we, we launched a line of of ya and middle grade graphic novels i was not in on the gestation of all of that there was there were that had been years in the making and and there were other people who were involved in that and i'm going to leave out some names but people like bobby chase and marie javens had done a lot of the groundwork and of course michelle wells who uh became my boss but it was all of a sudden one day in the beginning of 2019, DC did it like an editorial reshuffling and they said, okay, you're now group editor for the Young Readers line. <laughs> and I, I, I chuckled because I thought, sure, that makes sense. Take the oldest guy on staff and put him on the youngest books, you know. But it, it was great. It was great because it was, again, I've been lucky in my career is that at a certain point when, before you can get too comfortable doing one thing, it's something else comes along and, and mm -hmm. suddenly you have to, start using muscles that you've never used before right creatively and 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 so that was really exciting because uh, most of our authors had no experience with comics before they a lot of them came from the world of prose um mm -hmm. from and middle grade and a lot of our artists had never done comics before too they were young and and they had a different style we we consciously went for like a non quote unquote dc style or a non-superhero comic style right Mm -hmm. And and so both of those aspects were very exciting for me because the prose writers maybe didn't have a complete understanding of how comics work. So I got to, you know, help educate people on that, right? And, yeah. and what works different in comics as opposed to prose. And the same thing with the with the artist. It was great because, you know, a lot of them you would you would sort of have to walk them through the fundamentals of storytelling. And some of them would get it very quickly. Some you would have to you know, hold their hands a little bit, but there was a great sort of um, educational aspect to, to it that I liked. And I liked the variety of materials, you know, this, these weren't your standard superhero comics. These are more personal stories. They were mm -hmm. more stories dealing with the, you know, the emotional aspects of the character. Right. And, you know, still maybe a lot of them still superheroes, but, but, but not the same version of them as superheroes and usually like younger versions of them. And, and 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 it was exciting that that late stage in my career that it was like okay I got to reinvent myself again and 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 this is fun, so you know I did that between 2019 and and right up until I recently retired. I mean the Riddler thing was a weird thing because that wasn't really underneath my normal purview. It was just they they were looking they were shorthanded and needed somebody to do it and asked me if I could do it and I said sure I'll happy to do it but but predominantly my last four years at dc were was the was being the group editor on the uh, the young readers line yeah as an educator i i've really appreciated those and being a teacher educator i've worked with some students at the college level and i've been able to say oh you read beautiful creatures you know have you seen cammy garcia's take on the teen titans you know and, and getting to explore that way um so I, I appreciate those and as somebody that uses comics in the classroom sometimes comics have some some steps in the story where you go can i share this um so it's nice to have a sort of a ready-made assembly of stories that uh, have their own take and that you could feel comfortable sharing with students in the classroom too. Yeah. And I noticed you've, you've also interviewed a couple of the people who have worked for us, like Drew Brockington and uh -huh. uh, Jessica Brown. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, they were, they were both part of our young readers line. 
yeah yeah absolutely the um metropolis grove and um and uh batman batman and robin and howard yes yeah 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 of which there's a there's a sequel coming out to that next year which is which is mostly done it was one of the last projects i i finished up and it was great working with jeffrey he was terrific yeah yeah i appreciate uh both of those creators and uh yeah yeah much appreciation for what you've done in the world of comics um by means of a final question and we can hit anything that we've missed uh what are you thinking about creatively now what are the next creative steps either in the world of comics or uh just in creativity in general yeah so um which you know i've i've referred to a couple of times but i've made obvious but i've i've retired from my position in dc right and that was strictly voluntary it was something i've been thinking about for several years and 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 so i've been outside the company for a couple of months and and i'm now in the process of getting myself ready for a move to Spain. And, nice. Uh, Very and, nice. And, and that's happening at the end of this year. So th at the moment, not much creatively because there's so much chaos going on in my life, but, but my goal is once I get there and once I'm settled and in, I'm, I'm going backwards in a way, I'm going to start doing what I did in my teens and my twenties and making my own comics and, 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 and I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but you know, uh, put them up online kickstarter i don't know i haven't thought of it that far of it yet but mm -hmm. i love to draw and i want to get back to drawing i want to do my own writing uh i might explore a little bit of filmmaking which is something is a creative itch i've always had and never really been able to follow through up on it so so you know i i'm retired so i have free time but my free time is not going to be idle it's going to be exercising all of those creative muscles i have not used for some time and uh, you know and we'll see what comes of that. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, looking forward to uh, film and books and comics to come. And uh, I'll continue to follow along and hope you'll come back at some point and, and share some of the work and, and talk a little bit about the projects as they come to be. Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Have we missed anything that you want to make sure to share? Uh, I mean, if anybody wants to follow my adventures, I'm all over social media. Um, <laughs> predominantly on Facebook and in, on Instagram. And I, ha I have a, a second Instagram art um, page, which has kind of gone dormant, uh, but I intend to relaunch that again. So uh, yeah. And then, yeah. So I'm easy enough to find online if anybody wants to see what comes next. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, safe travels, uh, safe yeah. in your movement to Spain and uh, very exciting. And thanks so much for, for taking some time to talk with me today. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.